a welcome to everybody who's joined this session by Andre. The title of this session is From Selenium to Selenite, How to Migrate Tests Easily, that is having less boilerplate code and having more stable tests. And over to Andre. So my name is Andre. I'm from Estonia. And today I will show how you can migrate your project from Selenium to Selenite very easily. Yeah, this is my city, Tallinn. And uh, today plan, we have quite a few of time, only 20 minutes, and uh, today plan is very short. I will explain why you need to migrate, uh, what are the first steps, and I will show them, write in code, and briefly uh, explain what could be next steps if you need them. Uh, so uh, a short introduction, what is Selenite? Selenite is a tasting library uh, powered by Selenium, so made on top of Selenium. The point is that Selenium is not a testing library. Selenium is kind of low level tool for manipulating browser, but is it's not for testing. It doesn't contain matchers uh, and so on and so on and many other things. Uh, uh, Selenite uses Selenium to provide testing features. Uh, like uh, it provides you uh, concise syntax or cons API for writing readable and short tests without boilerplate. Uh, it helps you to create stable tests, unflaky tests. It uh, takes screenshots automatically. It provides you a, a huge amount of matchers or conditions, uh, actions, and so on and so on. So like all you need for testing. More about Selenite features see in this video that I showed it almost 10 years ago already on Selenium Conf. Uh, just to remind how writing tests in Selenite from the scratch is very easy. It's very easy. So you just need to call a method open to open a browser, uh, call method dollar to find some element, and call uh, some method on this web element, like click, set value, press enter, like this. Uh, <clears throat> and in the end, you can assert result, like uh, you can verify that this element has some needed text or attributes or enable it, disable it, visible, hidden, and so on and so on. So it's easy, but from the scratch, but how to migrate existing project to Selenite? It's not so easy at all uh, anymore because you already have some code base. And here we have two ways how to do it. The first way is revolutionary. You could just rewrite the whole project to Selenite. And probably it's in most cases, it's not a good idea. It's only possible in very small projects with only one uh, engineer involved. And the second way is evolutionary. So it's actually possible to leave all your existing code as is in pure Selenium. No, not a problem. And you can start writing uh, only newer code in Selenite, or you can start changing some small pieces of your uh, code base to Selenite. Uh, and it's optional, yeah, if, if you need. Uh, the good idea probably is to rewrite some flaky places, flaky tests to Selenite. Uh, this is a sample project that I will use. Uh, briefly said it's a coffee shop, like taken from another presentation. Coffee shop lists a list of orders and allows you to create a new order uh, and so on and download report of orders. Yeah, like this. We already have some uh, set of uh, tests uh, written for this application. We can run them if you need uh, to watch. Mm -hmm. These are pretty good tests uh, that actually contain few bugs. For example, they don't take screenshots they, uh, and few other problems. They sometimes are flaky and so on. Uh, so let's try uh, to perform some steps to, to migrate to Selenite. The first step, of course, is adding Selenite dependency to a project. It's as easy as this. Let's try it right now. We have POM XML where we uh, need to write just a simple dependency. Latest version was released today. Uh, and yeah, by the way, you don't need to include Selenium dependency because Selenite does it transitively. And also you don't need, for example, this dependency because it again comes transitively. Let's reload the project uh, and we can try that the tests uh, still are green. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's see what's what could be the next step. Uh, the next step would be like say Selenite uh, use your web driver. Uh, it's because like in every project uh, that you already have, you have some place that initialized uh, initializes web driver, uh, and you just need. The, like by default, Selenite opens its own web driver with its own good settings. But in your own case, in case of legacy project, you rather want to say Selenite, hey, like use our web driver, which is already created, set up, and so on. So let's uh, find this place. Yes, as you see, we have only one place in the whole project that creates Chrome driver or Firefox or Edge driver. All your projects uh, do, the, uh, do the same, like have very similar place. And and yeah, most probably it's method like init or factory that is called in the beginning of every test, most probably, right? Uh, so in this place where driver is already created, we just need to say uh, Selenite using method web driver runner set web driver, like you say Selenite, please use our driver. That's it. It's enough to start using Selenite methods. Uh, very easy. Now the the most uh, the easiest uh, thing to migrate to Selenite is using dollar, like this. Uh, dollar is just a shorter method for driver find element blah 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 blah. It's not only shorter, but it also provides some additional features like lazy loading, lazy evaluation, and so on, which already helps to avoid flaky tests. For example, let's try to do it. Find element. Aha, uh -huh. we have few similar places, like this one. We are looking for page header using this long construction. And in fact, we, instead of this construction, we can use uh, dollar. Dollar is selenite method, like selenite dot dollar, static method. And we are already using selenite. In fact, we have we can simplify this construction even more because by default, dollar accepts string, which means CSS selector. And uh, by the way, specifically in this place, uh, this body is not even needed. And we just could write dollar h1, which means like header one, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the very, yeah, and the tests are still green. Actually, we have uh, two red tests, but they are not caused by UI. It was rather some broken setup of wire mock, something like that. Uh, let's ignore it by now. Uh, another uh, thing to try is using two dollars for finding a list of elements, collection of elements, like this. In every place when you where you use driver find elements, like which returns list. You could uh, use uh, two dollars, which returns all found elements. Uh, again, uh -huh. we already have some similar thing. Like in this place, we could use uh, two dollars. Uh, okay, not in this place. Ah, okay, in this place. Let's uh, try. Let's do it quickly. Like instead of using this field, uh, use two dollars. And you see how easy it is to load a list of uh, elements. Very easy. Actually, this code can be even more simplified, but uh, yeah, let's do it uh, limited. Uh, and why it's a good idea to use dollar or two dollars? Because this uh, uh, method dollar returns not just web element, but it returns uh, selenite element, which is a subset of web element. Yeah, this dollar actually returns uh, selenite element. And uh, this uh, class has additional methods, which are very, very good for, for testing, like matchers. You could not only ask get texts or get whatever else or get attribute, but you could uh, write should have text, for example. Something like that. And this is already a matcher. This is already an assertion, which is very good for testing. Uh, by the way, let's try to do it uh, like this. Uh, let's try to return from this method, not text, but the element itself. 
Hmm? Yeah, let's align it. Let's check where this is used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so now it's a good idea instead of standard assert, uh, which is flaky because it does not wait for anything. Instead of this, use something like this order view, get page header. And here we can write should have text order coffee. And if we compare these two uh, lines, this is flaky because it doesn't wait for the header and this does not uh, take screenshots. So this assert was not really good actually. And this assert is much better because it, it waits uh, up to four seconds and uh, this timeout is configurable. And it if it fails, it takes screenshots. So in many senses, this uh, selenite assert is, is much better. And yes, here you can write multiple different conditions. You can check not only text, but you can, uh, for example, write should be visible. Or you can write should be visible and enable it or whatever. You can like use fluent interface. Uh, you can check, for example, in their text. This is all uh, might be useful for checking elements that are partially invisible or covered by other elements and so on and so on. We have lots of conditions, like we can check own text without children texts and so on and so on. Here are quite a lot of options. Uh, yeah. So we have replaced this flake line by this uh, much better line. Mm -hmm. And we have another place where it was used. Oh, no. oh, okay. Here, it's the same sheet. Mm -hmm. Or the coffee. Okay. Uh, and I show it how you can or even should use instead of standard assertions that are not very good in UI tests, you should use uh, Selenite assertions that have a lot of benefits like automatic screenshots, automatic very detailed error message. What exactly was wrong? By the way, we can check it. What if this line uh, fails? What happens then? Let's try. You will see that uh, in this case, Selena generates quite a pretty good error message containing all the things like page HTML, screenshots, uh, actual value, expected value, and so on. So you see, Selena generates error message that says that, hey, expected text was like this, actual text was like this, timeout was four seconds. You can even click and see a screenshot of that page and HTML source of that page and so on. So it's like very convenient in many senses. Yeah, this is HTML of that page. This is really detailed error message, useful for test. Uh, what's next? Uh, uh -huh. And these, these were very briefly, uh, very first short steps uh, and if you are interested and, and want to like learn more about Selenite, these are next steps that you could uh, learn to make your tests more robust, more readable, uh, more, flake, um, more stable, and so on. Some of these things are mentioned here. You can like advanced locators provided by Selenite, page objects, file download, file upload, local storage, like checking something in local storage checking something in clipboard, uh, checking that URL matches some expected URL, uh, how, could, how you could write custom conditions, custom comments, write custom clicks, double clicks, and so on. And how ca you can faster make your test faster, like by uh, using uh, uh, Selenite features uh, for speed up uh, yeah, your tests. Selenite has like several features to speed up your test using uh, JavaScript tricky code and so on. How to could you write uh, generate reports automatically from all Selenite steps and even some kind of profiler? How to run tests in parallel? Oh, uh, how to use yeah, Shadow DOM or check elements inside of Shadow DOM? And how can can you write tests for mobile applications using yeah, Selenite, which uses Selenium and Appium? Uh, and since we have five minutes more, probably I can answer questions or 
while we are waiting for questions, I could show how uh, how you can could simplify edge objects using selenite. Uh, yeah, in case of selenite, uh, actually page objects might be much much simpler that, than currently you are used uh, in selenium. For example, you don't uh, need to call page factory anymore. Uh, you don't need this at all. You can just write like this, and you can just write like this: use dollar, and no no need for annotations anymore. You can use two dollars here. Okay, uh, yeah, like this. You can write collection here again. Yeah, instead of list, you will use elements collection, but it's much, much shorter. You don't need to a constructor with a driver. You don't need all this shit. Yeah, and you see now your test is much, much uh, shorter. And not only now we have more additional features to to learn. Uh, uh, another, yeah. Do we have some question to answer, or I can continue? We have one question, uh, Andre, and that is, uh, what uh, selenite features make the test faster? Okay, uh, selenite uh, can make the test faster by uh, applying uh, several tricks. Uh, mostly using JavaScript or CDP, uh, JavaScript mostly. So for example, if you have a huge form having like hundreds of fields, uh, typing text in all these fields is, is very slowly. Like Selenium by default uses common send keys, which types all the keys one by one. And Selenite can do it much faster by using JavaScript, which types in all the text at once with just one JavaScript call. Uh, and so on. Selenite can allow you to check, uh, for example, here we have links. This is a collection of links and probably your page has like hundreds of links. Uh, to check all texts of these links, usually you need to, uh, to write a loop, get text, and it it's slow. Uh, compared, compared to that, Selenite allows you to check texts of all these links by, at once with just one call. Uh, something like that. Something like that. It, uh, and imagine you have hundreds of links. And this works very quickly because Selenite takes texts of all these elements at once with just one JavaScript call. This is a tricky JavaScript that collects text of all elements and returns a, a whole list of these texts. And as a result, this check is very, very fast. It can check elements very quickly. Also, Selenite can find elements quickly. For example, here, this is a good example. Here, if we iterate all the links and we want to find one link uh, by text. To avoid this uh, slow loop, we can use Selenite built-in uh, class called selectors. Selectors. This is a Selenite class that has a whole bunch of methods for finding elements uh, using JavaScript also among others, like in shadow dope and so on. And one of them is, for example, with tag and text. And you can easily find a link containing text crates. Exactly. And it's found. Now, this is a, basically the same text, the same code that find, uh, finds link by text. And by the way, uh, this code might be even more simplified. Instead of getting href attribute, we just can click the link. And believe me, the code still remains green. Uh, do you have more questions? Basically, that's it. I wanted to yeah, say thank you and uh, welcome you to try Selenite and ask me more and more and more questions in Twitter, in Telegram, in Slack, and so on, in LinkedIn. I will be happy to help you to migrate to Selenite. Thank you, Andre, for the session. Uh, we have one more question, which mm -hmm. is, uh, can you uh, please, can you integrate uh, Selenide with platforms like browser stack, Lambda test, and source labs? Uh, very good question. Yes, it's technically possible. On site selenite.org, you can find information 
how to use browser stack and lambda test and so slaps together with selenite tests yes it's doable we have mm -hmm. working example of this it's the click selenite.org slash documentation okay uh is the click performed with J uh, js again or the built-in selenium click is used sorry the click that was performed uh, was done using Selenium click or uh, the JavaScript? Uh, good question. Actually, uh, Selenite has two options. I guess by default, it uses Selenium uh, click, standard click, uh, but Selenite uh, provides uh, optional parameter click options uh, where, uh, and you can use this parameter to regulate how exactly you want to click. You can click using default method, or you can click using JavaScript. Uh, so this this makes Elena click using JavaScript, for example. Uh, it might be useful for elements that are not visible, are moving, are covered by other elements, and so on and so on. And you get fast additional parameters, like you can uh, make some offset, like click not the center of element, but a little bit shifted to the left, to the right, as you wish. So, uh, so Nicola is asking, uh, do you have to provide options every time or is there any general setting for it? Uh, again, very good question. Yes, there is a general setting. Uh, Selenite has a central class called configuration and you can set uh, many parameters globally. Like, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's not so nice. You just need to say click via JS equals true. And starting from this moment, Selenite will uh, will perform all clicks using JavaScript. Yeah, and this configuration class has lots more different configuration options, like where to take screenshots to, to which folder, and so on and so on. So can you please show how we can override the default timeout of four seconds in Selenite? Uh, sure, thank you for this question. Yeah, configuration.timeout equal like eight seconds, something like that. Or there are uh, another option. Sometimes you want to set timeout not globally, but with only uh, for only one statement, for only one shoot. It will already. Uh -huh. For example, you need to set a longer timeout only for this check. In this case, you can pass here the second parameter, uh, like duration of seconds. 10, something like that. So in this case, this is timeout only for this uh, statement. Okay. And one last question. Does mm -hmm. Selenite have self-healing features? Uh, nowadays in all automation, popular automation tools, uh, self-healing is one of the feature. So does Selenite support this? Uh, self-healing? No, no, I personally don't believe in this. I personally think that this is uh, like bullshit. In fact, you need to clarify why your test is failing and you need to fix the locators or test or so on. I don't believe in self-healing. Uh, technically, it's possible to combine Selenite with any other tool you like. Yeah. You can use Selenite together with uh, Helenium, Appium, whatever, if yeah. you wish. Yes, it's possible, but I'm not sure it's a good idea. So, well... But he Selenite helps you to find the wrong locator by taking automatic screenshot and you can easily click this HTML and find which locator would be a proper locator probably right now. So it's, it's it's like very easy to fix this locator manually. So, okay. Uh, thank you everyone. So this was the session by Andre.